어, 주일날 하루 종일 어, 교회에서 예배하는 사람들도 있습니다. And there are people who give their worship all day long on the Lord's Day at church. What difference do you think that will make? There are some people who only give first service worship and then they quietly leave. There are even some people who don't even know that it's the Lord's Day. Only after a long time passes do they realize, oh, today was the Lord's Day. And you must always keep in mind what kind of time this time is and what time will begin for you starting from Monday. 오늘 아침에는 예수님께서 우리 인생 건축을 하는 머리돌이 뭐냐 하는 굉장히 중요한 걸 우리 확인했습니다. And this morning we we heard through the message and confirmed what that most important cornerstone that Jesus spoke about was. 그게 제대로 되어지면 응답은 그냥 옵니다. And if we're able to understand it clearly, then of course answers will naturally come. 틀린 기초에다가 건물을 세우면 큰일 나죠. But if you raise a building when the the foundation is weak, you'll be in big trouble. That's what Jesus is speaking about. 오늘 우리 지금 유럽, 뭐 미국, 뭐 이런 데서 우리 우리 가족들이 같이 예배도 참여하고 있습니다. And there are members from Europe, from the U.S. that are today giving worship with us. What kind of works are happening right now? 또 오늘 우리 방학에도 양준모 의원 예배 참석을 같이 하고 있습니다. And also National Assemblyman Yang Junmo has come to participate in today's worship. 같이 예배하고 있습니다. And also our uh, candidate Seo Seung Han has come together with him. 양 장로님이 이제 지금 동삼교회 장로님이 우리 교회를 많이 도와주고 계시는 분입니다. National Assemblyman Yang Junmo, he is a member of Dongsamjie Church. Dongsan Church and Dongsan Church, and he has uh, helped us very much as an elder. And also, uh, Elder Yang Junmo's aunt Yang Hyeon uh, is also a member of our Emmanuel Soul Church. So we are all part of one family. Especially this coming week, we need to pray a special prayer for our country. As soon as I heard the news that these guests would be joining us for worship today, I thought to myself, this really is an important time for our country. This is what Jesus said. He spoke in parables. We see that in today's passage, Matthew 22, verse 1. He says the kingdom of heaven may be compared to this, and he speaks about a wedding feast where people are invited and they do not come. It's the point where the servants that are sent to invite them to the wedding feast are 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 killed. And the negri went out and many people to the wedding feast and they invited them. And so the servants go to the main road and they invite as many people as are are willing to come to the wedding feast. They invite as many people as are are willing to come to the wedding feast. They invite as many people as are are willing to come to the wedding feast. They invite as many people as are are willing to come to the wedding feast. They invite as many people as are are willing to come to the wedding feast. They invite as many people as are are willing to come to the wedding feast. They invite as many people as are are willing to come to the wedding feast. They invite as many people as are are willing to come to Lightly, you may just think of this as a parable that Jesus spoke about there, but there are so many important messages contained inside of this. If we correctly understand what the church is, that becomes a tremendous blessing unto us. It is a church that is a model of heaven. That's why, first and foremost, we must understand what kind of things are happening right now. And keep in mind what kinds of things will happen starting tomorrow. Children of God have a different status. And no matter what anybody says, why is it that unbelievers go to get their fortunes told? John 8, 44, it says, your father, the devil. And you may feel slighted or be offended by this, but it doesn't matter. And 
And that's just a given. It's, it's just a matter of fact where unbelievers have to go to those who are demon-possessed to get their fortunes told and perform exorcisms. Because they are held swayed by the devil. But 1 Corinthians 3.16 says that unseen to our eyes, those who are saved, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us guiding us. And all these things pertain to heaven. The average individual cannot understand these words. You think very lightly about this fact, but I continue to repeat myself. When you go to people who are demon-possessed, the moment that they lay eyes on you, they know that you are a child of God. And I said this before as well, but even in America, there are people um, where you can go to get your fortunes told. You pay a little bit of money and they tell you your fortune. There was a deaconess, and her friend continued to persuade her to go uh, to the fortune teller. She was a Christian, and so she said she didn't want to go, but actually... She was a little bit curious, and so when her friend continued to persuade her, she went along with her. You would pay $50, and the person would take hold of your hand and then tell you your future. They tell you your past. They also tell you your future. Who would not be swayed by those words? This person is a senior deaconess today, but at that time she was a, just a deaconess. And this shaman, this, this fortune teller, took hold of her hand. And her entire body began to tremble. After some time passed, she just refunded her $50 and said, just go home. I can't tell you your fortune. Now her friends saw that and realized that there's something to this deaconess. It's true. The moment that you're saved to become a child of God, the Holy Spirit now governs over you. Why is it that even after people achieve success, there's nothing but destruction that ensues? It's because of this, John 8, 44. And you need to be aware of this. What kind of things happen in your time of prayer, in your time of worship? Psalm 103, verses 20 to 21, what kinds of things unfold in your time of prayer and worship? The word is being fulfilled. In your time of prayer, in your time of prayer and worship, the Holy Spirit is present upon you. And in that place, God's plan is fulfilled. And the Bible also explains to us that it is at this time that God sends His heavenly armies, His, His, His angels unseen to our eyes. It is not just your simple words. Apostle John was exiled, and there he had a vision. Revelations 8, 3 to 5. Every prayer that you pray is contained within these golden censers. It's delivered to God. It's happening even now. And that's why these are tremendous things. And those who pray knowing this fact will be able to tap into the tremendous strength of the spiritual realms. Daniel 10, 10 to 20 records at the very moment that you set your heart to pray, God already mobilizes His angels. What's important is number three. We say this. We remark, I suddenly fell ill. I suddenly collapsed. 
it seems like it happened suddenly or abruptly, but not at all. It's been happening for quite some time now. All of a sudden, I had problems with my, my heart. Well, that may, it may appear that way, but that's been happening for quite some time now. Somebody was saying, I always got a full body checkup and a physical conducted, and I was always fine, but all of a sudden, I was diagnosed with a terminal stage of stomach cancer. There is no way that that all of a sudden happens abruptly. That has been progressing for quite some time. And number three is important, which is filling. This is what Jesus spoke about. When we are filled abundantly, that's when these works arise. People continue to fall into unbelief, but once they become filled with that unbelief, spiritual problems overwhelm them. There are those who are conflicting inside of their spiritual darkness, and one day, this spiritual mishap unfolds. If you continue to pray, this is what happens. This is what Jesus said. It says in Matthew 12, verses 28 and 30, that if the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then the kingdom of God has come. Acts 1.3 records that for 40 days he explained things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now, when you finally become filled with that strength, Acts 1.8, you, you stand as witnesses to the ends of the earth. You need to remember this. I always give you this testimony, but for me, there's no special time of prayer that I set apart. I do this 24 hours. And the people who took hold of this mystery and completely overturned the political world, they were people like Joseph and David. These kinds of individuals need to begin to arise. Surely these works are happening even now. There are people who come together on the Lord's Day and they keep slandering other people, speaking ill of others, but they really are ignorant fools. It's a time for you to enter into deep prayer. And then for the next ensuing six days of the week, you begin to confirm these answers. Then what is this today when we gather together in worship? It is recorded in today's scripture. It is akin to us participating in this heavenly feast. That's worship. Then it's not just a feast. What is it? It is attending a wedding feast. This is a parable that Jesus speaks about. Then what is this worship we give at church? It is a gathering of people who are clothed in the wedding garment. That's why in the end of this passage, the person who did not have the wedding feast, that wedding garment in the feast was chased out. If you know this fact, then all day long, even if you're seated here, it's not cumbersome or boring. You're able to enjoy the depths of that mystery of prayer. And people who are able to enjoy this blessing of prayer, they don't need to speak a lot of words because they're constantly enjoying prayer. What does it mean to take part in this heavenly feast? It 
It is a model of heaven. In other words, it is a very special meeting where the triune God himself is present. What is the heavenly feast? It is a special time in which the blessing of the throne comes upon us. How amazing is that? It is speaking about the blessing that took place on the Mount of Mount Calvary, that was promised on the Mount of Olives, and that was fulfilled in Mark's upper room. 자, 왜 혼인 잔치라고 합니까? Then why did he compare it to a wedding feast? If Christ is our groom, then the saints, the believers, are his bride. What does that mean? It is a place where the covenant dwells. Not only does the covenant reside there, what does it mean by this wedding feast? In a wedding feast, we have joy, we have praise, exaltation, we have glory. What's the most important characteristic? It's joy. And here there is an, a tremendous future contained. Why is it a wedding feast? In Israel, whenever there is a wedding, there are three feasts that are held. And there is an engagement party where you have just the family members gathered. In other words, an, an engage, engagement party. And then the second feast. And first was an engagement party. Second is another feast held at the bride's home. And the tradition of the Israelites was that they, the groom would not alert the family in advance when he would come. That doesn't mean that uh, they don't know what day he'll come, but if, for example, he's set to come on Tuesday, you don't know what time he'll arrive. Usually he comes very late at night. And that's why the Bible also speaks about the parable where the bride waits with the lamb. And that's why there are stories of the virgins that fall asleep with the lamps lit. It's very meaningful. It's very symbolic of the advent of Jesus Christ, who is our groom when he will return. And after the feast is held in the bride's home, again, they have another feast held at the groom's house. This is very symbolic because even after uh, we die and we go to heaven, again, there will be another feast held there for us. These amazing blessings can be enjoyed during your time of worship. What does it mean to be clothed in the wedding garment? So it's just clothes. It's the clothing. It's the attire. We, we have this kind of attire even now. But at that time, there were set and in de determined attire to symbolize your position. We have President Yoon Song yeol but his attire is no different from the clothes we wear. But at that time, the kings were clothed in different attire. And you would have to be clothed in garments that are fit to your standing or your position. And that's why here you see a feast where only those clothed in the wedding garments are gathered. This is very important. This is the most important stream in the Bible. People who knew Genesis 3.15 moved the world. And when the people forgot this again, it was again repeated, Exodus 3.18, go and give a blood sacrifice. That's the Passover. But can you understand these words? Not at all. It's very difficult to comprehend. 
but this simply is a promise of Christ. People can absolutely not overcome their disasters, the background of hell, and the background of darkness of Satan. And the word God has given to us to overcome all of that is the Christ. And that's why we are now clothed in Christ. These words are very important. And once again, they fell into destruction. And we see this promise once again. Isaiah 7, 14, the virgin will give will be with child and we will give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Esther, who understood these words, overturned all of Babylon. Again, they forgot and they became colonized under Rome, but again, they made this confession of faith. Matthew 16, 16, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The gathering and the meeting of people who are clothed in the wedding garments to save the world and change the world is this worship. It is a church. We are participating that feast, in that feast. If, if you cannot restore this, that I'm ex this content that I'm explaining to you right now, your walk of faith will amount to nothing. You cannot receive answers. This is happening all the time. Your status has changed. In your time of prayer and worship, these things are arising, and when that becomes filled, that's when the works begin to take place. The place where these people gather is the church. It is worship. I will come to the conclusion. Today we're giving our church construction dedicational worship. Then what is this church? What is this temple? What is it? This temple, the sanctuary, is what we can send out to for missions and evangelism. Through this. Why did the first, second, third temple of Jerusalem become destroyed? You know the reason for that, and that also explains to us why it is that the churches of the world are closing their doors. The courtyard of the Gentile that God spoke about the courtyard for the children, the courtyard for prayer. Then, These things were commanded by God himself, and they did make this inside of the temples, but there they sold the animals, they changed the coins, it disappeared. It no longer served this function. You need to remember this. A place that contains a facility to provide healing and summit for the 237 nations, that is the Holy Temple. So you need to pray for this. It must not become just an empty slogan. We must make a facility where we can invite and gather the 337 nations of the world. That is the Holy Temple. What kind of age are we living in right now? If we cannot bring together the 237 nations, if the multi-ethnic people cannot gather here, then it cannot be a proper church. And right now, you're watching this video. And we have all these systems in place. We have the City Emanuel Soul Church as well as a headquarters too, and I'm most grateful for your support. But when you look at and see this from overseas, 
The quality is different right now through the RTC TV. This message is being transmitted and broadcast to over 100 countries, translated into more than 10 languages. And why is the Holy Temple important so that we can carry out this kind of work and these kinds of ministries? The most important thing is the number, the thir- third point. Is it God's culture, godly culture, or is it idolatrous culture? And this we can determine by looking at that holy temple. Here in Yongdo, if we're able to make a, a very good temple, then we will be able to change all the culture here. That's why I'm saying here at our church, we need to make a, a, a location, a facility where we can have these cultural events and performances. Make a place where many multi-ethnic disciples can gather to get some rest. And so I'll prepare the content, so now prepare the system is what I'm saying. It is a spiritual battle. And if you take part in this, of course you'll receive answers. Especially here, our Emmanuel Church in Busan, it's a little bit different here. And whenever I look at you, it may seem as though you're very powerless, but there is this innate power that you possess, and so I find it very hard to understand. Only this church, only here at Emmanuel, Emmanuel Church, we, had, we gave the offering for the World Missions Conference, and we, you gave so much offering that you spent it for the Missions Conference, and whatever that was left was passed over to the headquarters. Only the Emmanuel Church was able to do that. No one else was able to do that because we don't have that strength. We didn't ask for that offering, but then the elders, I received the report that they were saying that the elders at Emmanuel Church had given so much offering, they had to pass it over into the headquarters because they had money left. And I said, I made that calculation myself. Really pray before God to see what kind of record you'll leave behind within God's history. The time will come for each and every one of us to leave this earth. We don't know when that time will come. What kind of footprint will you leave behind? And when that time schedule comes, we will not require anything at all. What is most needed right now? Somebody suddenly fell ill, and he was in such um, such suffering, so much pain, that he just didn't want to survive it. He didn't want to live anymore. At that point, you don't need knowledge, you don't need anything. He was in so much pain, he said he just wanted to hasten the day when he left the earth. And he really was a reputable, very distinguished figure. But when I saw that, I thought to myself, if we, mankind, if we do not stand before God, nothing will work for us. You need to be able to see this most accurately. And you must now play your part to run the air and to save countless multitudes of people with the power of the gospel. I bless you in the name of the Lord that this may be the week in which you are clothed with new grace. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for giving us this time to give you this church construction dedicational worship.
Would you allow us to have the full restoration of the blessing of prayer, worship, and the church? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.